Hi, today we're at Sea Houses in Northumberland. This is a very well known place with bird photographers. People come here in May and June and go across to the Farne Islands. This is where you catch the boat. It's also quite a good place for bird photography during the winter months as well. There's a small beach here and the eider duck are extremely tame. And then there's a whole series of rocks down there. If you go and sit amongst those rocks on an incoming tide, there's a variety of common waders will come very close to you. They're very used to people walking about the harbour and it's a good place to be doing waders. Starting off with the Dunlin, the important thing here is I'm sitting amongst the rocks along the one side of the harbour. I don't stand out nearly as much as if I was sitting out in the open. Just by keeping still amongst the rocks, the birds will be far more accepting of me. I'm doing the same as I did in a, a recent film where I did a high tide wader roost. I've got the clear image zoom on. That gives me a 1.5 magnification. On top of the fact I've got the 600mm, the 200-600mm to at the 600mm end with a 2 times extender. And then the fact you're shooting video crops the picture even further. So I think at the moment I'm shooting with a 2,700mm lens. I'm filming birds at a distance that bird watchers watch birds at. I've never been able to do this before and it's, it almost feels like I'm cheating but the quality is quite astounding. The quality that I'm getting with this ring plover just amazes me at such a magnification. Now I don't use the clear image zoom for stills photography at all. Whatever the camera is doing to interpolate the files back up to their former size, you're still getting a full size file, 8600 odd pixels on the longest edge. Whatever the camera is doing, you can do on the computer afterwards. And I guess you could do the same in video mode too. I just don't know how. At such magnifications you do get the problem of vibration. So I've got the small rig on to try and reduce that but also the most important thing is I can't touch the pan handle. So I've got my bungee rope permanently attached to the pan handle and when I want to pan I pull on the bungee rope and follow the bird rather than touch the handle. Very important. In the background by the way you can hear a strimmer cutting the grass and the man doing it was there for many hours so I did pause to hope he'd finish but didn't look like he ever would. Following this red shank about by pulling on the bungee it's a bit difficult you've got to be on the ball and moving quite quickly to do it but it can be done. For this clip I did zoom back a little bit but otherwise all of the clips we're looking at are taken at 2700 mil or the equivalent thereof. I've slowed the footage down a little bit as well. Generally speaking I prefer wildlife when it's just going a bit slower than real time. It always looks a bit too jerky when you film things at normal speed and play it back at normal speed. And a bit more footage of Dunlin. There's maybe 20 Dunlin coming into the harbour and the tide is coming in so it's gradually pushing the birds closer towards me. I didn't notice at the time of filming these Dunlin but there was Curlew Sandpiper amongst them as well. You're concentrating on other things, you haven't got time to look at all the detail in the birds but there's a Curlew Sandpiper. It's slightly larger than the Dunlin, slightly paler colour and the eye stripe above the eye is slightly more prominent. They only look a similar plumage during the winter. In the summer months a curly sandpiper is quite spectacular. I'll just show you one picture of a curly sandpiper that I took during the month of May, some years back now. What lovely colours they have. Inevitably there's turnstones. They get just about everywhere and a black-headed gull in the background. There's obviously rich pickings, plenty of food, a lot of birds coming in.
and you can see them very deliberately turning the vegetation over just like they would turn stones over looking for bits underneath and a cormorant drying its wings out on the rocks As the tide comes in, the water is getting deeper in the harbour. Easier for the boats to get out. Even in the winter they're doing boat trips around the Farne Islands. But the beach is now starting to full up and you can see the eider duck on the right hand side. And this is my favourite subject in this harbour. Very colourful ducks and normally nowhere near as approachable as here. That's the GoPro camera, you can see it on the floor there. Unfortunately it's got the media pod on it, which means it's not waterproof at this point, so I have to keep going and retrieving it. But the eider ducks, they loaf about on the water but they look more interesting when they come up onto the beach and start waddling about. This is the female, all brown. Although there were some immatures there that were very brown as well, but you could see that they were actually males, there were little bits of white in them. But this is the, the normal male plumage, and a very colourful duck. They are very attractive, but the nicest thing of all about eider ducks is the sound they make. They have a wonderful call. There is a very tiny stream that crosses the beach here and so these birds are coming out of the salt water to come and have a, a quick dabble and quick drink in the fresh water coming down the beach which they've just reached now. I have to say the eider duck are much better in early spring. If you could be here in February and March, they're really displaying well. And you really want to pick a day where it's nice and sunny so you get blue water and also no wind blowing so the water's nice and smooth. But it's a wonderful place to do eider ducks displaying. Now I actually quite like working from this boat ramp. Getting on an incoming tide, it's dry. When the tide's going out, it's already wet. And if you try and lie down on it then, it's a bit on the damp side. But on an incoming tide, you can lie on this concrete and be dead level with the eider duck. So we are now looking at footage that I've taken on a previous year in the spring. It is important on there on a nice bright day, you get better colours on the water, but it's the sound these ducks make that is just absolutely wonderful. Now you can see from the position of this female, she's inviting the male to mate with her. Very typical of all duck species I think, where they stretch the necks out like that. But just listen to the sound of the male when he dismounts. 
I think it's a wonderful sound he makes. And I'll just show you a handful of pictures that I've taken of Ida ducks in the harbour at Sea Houses. Thanks for watching.